Today we're gonna learn 15 things about the kit lens. The Canon EFM 15 to 45 mm f3.5 to 6.3 IS STM. We will first look at physical aspects and at the ending of this video we will test the image quality. Let's begin. First thing, what's on the lens? On the body we see the full name of the lens. If you want to put a filter on it, we also see the filter thread size of 49mm. Next we have the zoom ring with this nice plastic texture for more grip and the focusing ring. The lens is now retracted. To unlock it, we must pull the switch up and rotate. Now we can use the zoom ring. On the bottom side of the lens printed are the words image stabilizer, showing that the lens has optical image stabilization. We also see the minimum focusing distance and lastly the lens mount that is made out of plastic. Second thing, size and weight. To give an idea of its size, I put this lens next to a GoPro and two other lenses. This is how it looks retracted. And now, this is the size when it's zoomed in at 45mm. Regarding the weight, this lens has only 128 grams. Third thing, focal length. This lens is an alternative to the classic 18 to 55mm kit lens. On an APS-C sensor, 18mm isn't very wide as you can see. But now, at 15mm, you can get many more things inside the frame. Now let's see the full frame equivalent. Taking into consideration the sensor's crop factor of 1.6, the full frame equivalent of this lens is 24 to 72 millimeters. Since the zoom ring is the one who changes the focal lengths, I can say that it turns quite good. I've always liked this pattern that it has for extra grip. The only thing that I don't like is the ring's fluency. It has a sticky feeling to it, not ideal for video shooters, but it's okay for photographers. Fourth, compatibilities. This lens will not work on DSLRs. It was made only for Canon's EOS M cameras. Fifth, maximum and minimum aperture values and the number of blades. The lens can close the aperture at a whopping f40. But this only happens if we are zoomed in all the way to 45 mm. Also, it has 7 aperture blades and they are rounded. The minimum aperture values go from f3.5 at 15 mm to f6.3 at 45 mm. Sixth, focusing. The autofocus, as we can see, is very quick and it's accurate. There is a microphone on the table. If you don't hear any noises, it's because this lens is completely silent. The minimum distance at which this lens can focus is 25 centimeters, and oftentimes this will come in handy. Unlike the zoom ring, the focusing ring turns very smoothly and it's very responsive. Image stabilization. The lens has an optical image stabilizer. It will fix camera shake issues quite a lot. Now we had the image stabilization turned off and now we turn it on. The IS works efficiently and quietly. 8. Retractable design. When retracted, this lens is only 44.5 mm tall. It is one of the smallest zoom lenses Canon ever made. Collapsed, the lens doesn't work on the camera, but by pulling the switch, we can instantly make it usable. 9th. Full-time manual focus override. An interesting feature if you want to make small tweaks to the focus, with this lens you can manually focus while having autofocus turned on. 10th. Coating and optimized lens placement. This lens has Canon's special coating for reduced ghosting and lens flare. It also has optimized lens placements for better image quality. Well, we're gonna see how much these help because now we're moving to image quality tests. Let's see the sharpness. At 15mm, the middle of the image 
is very sharp with good contrast. Let's now look at the corner of the image. Quite soft at f3.5. Let's now close the aperture at 5.6 and we see a small improvement. But for good sharpness in the corners, we have to close all the way to f8. Stopping now at f11, and due to diffraction, the image started to get softer. Let's zoom in halfway at 28 mm, where the minimum aperture is f4.5. Again, very good sharpness in the middle of the image. The corner, not great, but definitely better than what we saw earlier at f3.5. Stopping down to f5.6 and we see just a small improvement. Only now, at f8, we have a good result in the corner. Another improvement comes at f11. Let's now zoom in all the way to 45 mm. Now, the maximum aperture opening is at f6.3. The middle of the image is very sharp, starting to look better in the corner, closing now at f8 and the corners are fairly good. At f16, the effect of diffraction starts to soften this image. At f40 now, you probably won't be using this lens too much, but this is how it looks like, it's very soft. Not too bad for a kit lens, it's an average performance, but you will always have excellent sharpness in the middle of the image and the corners are looking good if you stop the aperture to f8. Let's see distortion and vignetting. At 15 mm, we clearly see some barrel distortion, but this is absolutely normal for this focal length. But we cannot say the same thing about that vignetting though. Let's switch on peripheral illumination from the camera's settings. Much better now. Let's move to 20 mm. Vignetting has improved a lot. The dark corners are pushed away. Also, we have no distortion. Let's zoom in at 45 mm. Surprisingly, we see some gentle barrel distortion again. And vignetting, now at 45 mm, is looking good. Bright light performance. Not such a good result here. Those coatings are handling the bright light a bit, but we do see a noticeable amount of flaring. It's quite a typical result for a kit lens. Close up image quality. We are now 25 centimeters away from the subject, the minimum focusing distance of this lens. At f6.3, it shows ghosting, low contrast and very poor sharpness. Now at f8, there is a small improvement. At f11, sharpness is not ideal, but at least the image is a lot more clear. Finally, bokeh. This is how the bokeh looks like at f3.5. We are now at 25 centimeters from the subject. At f6.3, we see quite a busy background. But again, if we get very close at 25 centimeters, it's a pleasing result. We have a good soft bokeh. Overall, this kit lens has two main optical flaws poor close-up image quality and heavy vignetting. But this doesn't mean that we can't get some good results with it. It will always have good sharpness in the middle of the image, it has a good image stabilizer, and the small size and versatile focal lengths will definitely help a photographer on capturing different types of subjects. If this video was useful, please press that like button. See you next time.